Hey, what's up guys? Jag from Jaggy Sports. Uh, make sure you hit subscribe, make sure you hit like, make sure you hit notification, and you're going to get all this freaking content. Things are heating up. Things are really heating up with James Harden and Ben Simmons talks. So what I mean by that is there could be a deal. The deadline is tomorrow. I think tomorrow 1 p.m. Pacific time. I'm not 100% sure, but... The deadline is tomorrow. Will it ha actually happen? Chances are it is heating up and I think it might, might happen. So check this clip out and uh, we're going to do a full analysis of it, uh, of it after. So make sure you clip, check this clip out by, by Brian Windhorst talking about Philadelphia 76ers and Brooklyn Nets. You can feel the urgency of the Brooklyn Nets and they might get this deal done in the next 24 hours. Make, make sure you check this clip out. Ryan Winhorst, as we are now a day and a half away from the NBA trade deadline and things are getting hot in the Eastern Conference. Wendy, thank you for jumping in here. And please, for the audience that was not with us on Get Up about 20 minutes ago, share what you are hearing about the latest out of Philadelphia and Brooklyn. Yeah, I mean, I know that Steve Nash and others are saying there's nothing happening, but that's that's not true, and I understand why they aren't aren't saying that uh, because this is so sensitive. But the sides are absolutely talking, absolutely negotiating. Um, you know, yesterday the the Seventy Sixers were out looking for other moves, uh, talking to other teams about other moves, moving players, opening roster spots, leading those teams to believe that they were getting ready to make the other deal, and. They are. They have swapped offers, and really right now it's about haggling the ancillary parts. Now, does that mean it's absolutely going to get done by tomorrow? No, I can't say that. I'm not sitting in the room. It, it's complicated. But I would just, the way I described it to you on Get Up is that they are in the deal zone right now. Um, and so I am leaning towards this probably happening. I don't want to, like, guarantee it or anything, but I, 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 I think we're headed in that direction. Oh, so fascinating. And – Obviously, the clock is ticking, and, and who is it that says, um, it was Andrew Brandt who always says, you know, deadlines uh, cause action or whatever the expression he uses all the time. We're approaching the deadline. Wendy, what do we know about who wants this to happen? That, to me, is the fascinating piece of this. The NBA is like this great Shakespearean drama. So I understand fully why the Sixers want to move on from Ben Simmons. That, that's obvious. I understand why the Nets might be wanting to make this trade in part because there's no reason to believe James Harden stays with them after this year. So if you can get an, an all-star in return for him, that makes sense. But how about the people involved? Do we know if this is what Harden wants? Do we know if this is what Kevin Durant oh, oh, wants? Greeny, yeah. I can't tell you how much James Harden wants this. Really? And because he basically – I mean, you got to be very careful using the Q word or saying whatever, but – his actions over the last like 10 days are basically a threat to the, the Nets. What he did in Sacramento last week, at, at, at that time, the Nets had lost, I believe, five or six in a row. Durant was obviously out. They were playing in Sacramento. That's a game they got to win for about five different reasons. And just to, just to frame this, James Harden, until he hurt his hamstring in a game in the first quarter last spring, and had to leave the game in the first quarter. He had scored in double figures in 450 consecutive games. He's one of the greatest scorers in NBA history. He then, after that happened, he got healthy from that. He then had a streak of 44 consecutive games. Last week in Sacramento, he played 37 minutes and scored four points. Okay? Mm. That doesn't even articulate the effort level he gave on defense in that game. And then he basically shut it down for the rest of that road trip. And he is screaming in every way he possibly can, I don't want to be here. Get me out of here, just like he did in Houston. And so what the real issue is here for the, the Nets is not the consequences of making this deal. It's the consequences of not making this deal. If they don't do this trade, what is James Harden going to do the rest of the season? And then, of course, what is he going to do when he becomes a free agent in the summer? That's what has spurred this into, into being. James Harden's basic feeling that I don't want to be here anymore.
Spectacular from Brian Windhorst, who's with us here. Greeny presented by Progressive Insurance. Progressive makes bundling easy and affordable. Get a multi-policy discount by combining your car, home, motorcycle, commercial, auto, and more. All your protection in one place. Bundle and save at Progressive.com. It does bring me back to the other key person in all this, though, is, and that is Kevin Durant, who I, I think is the one person who has covered himself in some valor in Brooklyn through all of this, while the rest of it has just been like a sideshow and a circus. Um, what if anything, do we know about what he wants to see happen here? Kevin Durant, I have as much admiration for Kevin Durant's talent as I do almost anybody I've ever seen. I think he is so brilliant. And I, I covered the Olympic team in Tokyo last summer, and Greeny, they should have given him two gold medals. He carried Team USA to that medal. I thought Greg Popovich was going to – Kiss him on. If we didn't have COVID protocols, I think Popovich would have kissed him on the lips <laughs> at the end of that, uh, at the end of that Olympics. Mm -hmm. um, but for some reason, and I, and I don't know why, uh, Kyrie Irving is able to connect with Kevin Durant. I don't think that that marriage makes sense to me. I, I, I frankly think, to put it bluntly, I think Durant could do better. But Kyrie and Kevin connect, and it connected, and Kyrie got him to Brooklyn. All of the other options he had. Not just where to play, but who to play with. Der Kyrie got him to won the Derby. It's you know it's after the shot he hit in Game Seven in 2016. I would argue it's the greatest accomplishment of Kyrie's career is is getting Durant to really believe and trust in him, and that connection, that coupling, has survived this situ this situation. Durant is aligned with Kyrie. He was aligned with Kyrie when he got there, and he remains aligned with Kyrie. And Harden is not. Last year, Harden and Kyrie really worked hard to, to fit together. You could see it on the court. You could hear it when they talked about it. They were 16-3 and three playing together last year when, Harden, or when uh, Durant was out. They really tried to work. That is over. The Harden-Irving relationship ain't working. Harden has basically you know, written it on his chest, if you've been paying attention. And Durant is remains, you know, believe believe that that he and Kyrie can do this, and so I suspect that that will result in Harden being gone, whether it's this week or this summer. So there you have it. Um, Brian Windhorst basically said, you know, things are heating up, and we all knew that. Um, but after last night's game where they got blown out by Boston, give, given the fact that none of their stars played. Um, basically, now Brooklyn is, Brooklyn is under the impression that James Harden will walk because he is totally checked out. Uh, you know, he wants to leave. 100% he wants to leave, and he's going to leave all the way to Philadelphia. So Sean Marks, the Brooklyn GM, is likely to do a deal fast because you know you you're not you gave up so much to get James Harden and you cannot just let him walk for nothing so we're gonna see what happens with uh, the trade deadline in the next 24 hours that is the James Harden news but also what I want to touch base and I'll talk more about this in the next couple days the governor of the new uh, of New, the state of New York has uplifted the mandate, right, for um, masks and whatnot kind of thing. So now there is optimism that, uh, you know, the mayor might do that. And if that happens, there's a pos real strong possibility that Kyrie gets to play home games. What does that mean for the James Harden trade? We don't know, right? Like... I don't think it means much because Sean Marks is really now under the impression, impression that, hey, I cannot lose this guy for nothing. That's the main headline of this. I cannot lose this guy for nothing. So I might as well make a deal. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> might as well make a deal. So the other one I want to talk about are the Russell, or sorry, are the Lakers willing to trade Russ Westbrook? I think they are willing, but there's no suitors. Nobody wants them. He's a forty-four million dollar this season, forty-four, uh, sorry, forty-seven next year, and the guys lost all, um, 
he looks lost. But it's probably because he doesn't like the system and and he just can't change. I think he's willing to change, but he just can't. Um, I understand Portland got rid of a lot of PC yesterday, but they're bringing in uh, Josh Hart, 3, 3 and D guy, but they're also bringing in uh, Jeremiah Grant. They're going to go after him with a $21, 20, $21 million trade exception. So look out for that. Portland might uh, might be might be pretty good with their defense, but you never know. So tell me what you guys think. Is James Harden and Ben Simmons deal gonna happen in the next twenty four hours? Leave a comment. Tell me what you guys think. Is this deal gonna happen? Yes or no? And are you in favor of this deal? Yes or no? Make sure you hit subscribe. Make sure you hit like. Make sure you hit notifications. And you're going to get all this content. Jag from Jaggy Sports. Anything happens, I'll break it down.